you know, Idaho State has some great players. And, you know, especially that starting lineup of theirs. You know, they can, they can really score and they take uh, really nice shots. So, you know, when you look at those numbers and you got some of those really great players that, that you know, they 10, 10, 10, and 11, and they were 3 for 10, 1 for 10, 3 for – that's our defense. I mean, because that really, really, for them, they got some – they're really a nice flow team. They, they run good sets. Um, they made us work very, very hard and cover the court. Um, you know, north south we're good at. East west is something that we've been working on in terms of court coverage, and they are a great, uh, you know, sideline to sideline team. They move the ball so well, so we exhausted ourselves, but uh, it worked out for us because I think that the, the tempo and the intensity of our defense was just the story of the game. Coach Andre Fernandez, Miami Herald. Uh, I guess to just talk in light of yesterday, just talk about, like you said, you had absolute confidence in this team and you come up with your most lopsided win ever in the tournament. I mean, I guess just talk about this, the team's mental state, everything coming into this game, it seemed like everything was... You know, yeah, I told you yesterday that I knew we would play our tails off. I just knew we would. And I don't, you know, nobody held back. Um, we have a saying that you have to support the pressure. I mean, if I'm going to go out on a limb and, and exhaust myself on ball pressure, then the other four behind me better support that effort. And we supported the pressure today, you know, in whatever defense we were in. Somebody was working, 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 that point guard. I mean, I think we really grinded out their point guards, and I think they really, I mean, they started the game, they had their head up by the end of the game, they were reverse dribbling by the very end of the game. You know, we, I think we had worn them down. Um, but that was, you know, probably seven different people that had that job for us, and we just kept rotating, rotating, rotating. But it was also the support behind it. Because, you know, you'll be a little riskier if you know your team's got your back behind you, and that's just what tonight ended up being. Over here, um, I guess just talking about the you know the size advantage inside, getting the ball to Pepper, getting the ball to Sylvia early, and the way you just dominated inside. I guess Pepper, if you want to take. It. Um, well, I knew coming into this game that uh, I would have advantage. Obviously, I'm six six, and their tallest player is about six one, six two. So before the game, you know, with the post, we discussed how it's important for us to, you know, use our size and our strength as an advantage. So we, we talked about it, and our main thing was just executing, and, you know, we came out on top. Down here. Uh, Shanice, can you talk about the team's play in the first half and how you guys were able to, to jump out and, and sort of take control of the game and your, your, your work especially in that half? Um, yes, we, we also talked about that yesterday yeah. um, as well in our press conference. Um, we didn't want to come, come down um, on our heels. We wanted to dictate everything that happened out there. Um, and I think that we showed that tonight. Um, we were very excited. Um, we wanted to you know show who we, who we were and um, just another opportunity to basically show who Miami is, um, and we were on our toes tonight. And to Ms. Shanice, uh, NBC Pocatello, question for you about Idaho State and, and how you, what you saw from them out there. Um, they moved the ball very well. Um, they had a lot of screens and a lot of action going on. We had to stay alert the entire game. Um, they cut in front of our face a lot of times. Coach kept yelling at us, saying, don't let them cut him, cut him in front of your face. Um, but we, we couldn't help it. Um, but, you know, we had our we had people behind us supporting it. Um, and I thought Idaho State just did a great job of just moving the ball, as I said previously. Um, they were very scrappy, um, physical, and they played their hearts out as well. So. Coach Meyer, same type of question to you, but it seemed like Idaho State really wanted to get physical with you guys. There was a couple moments where players were back and forth, a hard mm -hmm. foul. What did you see from them that maybe they tried to spark a little rally in their team? Well, you know, we expect that. I mean, we, we expect it and respect it. I mean, go ahead and come at us. You know, we, we want to be great, and we want to be challenged, and we want somebody to find something that they think we're not great at and, and try to expose us for it because this whole season we've just been on a journey, and I think they thought that one of their advantages was to be kind of to, to push us off some of our cuts and try to slow us down, and I think that was really smart. I mean, he's a great coach. Um, I loved it, I loved seeing it, and I loved how we responded to it.
<clears throat> Any more questions for the student athletes? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, student athletes. The locker room will remain open uh, for the next <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> questions for Coach Meyer? Coach Greg Lee at the Spokesman Review. Uh, you held them to 16 points in the first half. I know that was a season low for Idaho State. How good was your defense compared to the rest of your games this year? I, I think that we had um, a complete and 100% commitment to each other on the defensive end. I think there was no question that we understood our schemes. I told you uh, yesterday, too, I think we were a very conceptual team. If we get our concepts and we see it developing, um, then we can play to our instincts. And I thought the staff did a nice job of, of prepping that, and we saw some opportunities that we could get, and then you could see them unfolding, and that made us even faster than we are. It made us quicker than we are because we had done a great job mentally of preparing and sort of visualizing what we thought our opportunities would be. That's why it was so fun for me to see some of those freshmen, some of our freshmen making some high-level reads and steals like Saray McGuire and Michelle Woods that just broke on the ball. Uh, my favorite play of the game, however, was Pepper's steal uh, from the backcourt, and, and she she broke on the ball. And you know that's not something that we practice a lot. That we want Pepper to be breaking on the ball for the what we call the pick six. And uh, I thought she did a fantastic job. Pepper was really into it today, and I was really happy for her. Dave Trimmer from the Orlando Sentinel. Did you? Talk a little bit about the, obviously a different lineup and how that affected your pattern, rotations, and things like that, and how they responded to it. Right. Uh, you know, I, I think um, we probably had less possessions um, as we sort of kicked to more of our offensive sets a little bit, and, and not as much of our early offense showed up, and then not as much of our late offense showed up. So the first 10 seconds of the shot clock and the last 10, um, we're just a different team now. And so, you know, we talked about that uh, in our preparation, and we talked about it just now in the locker room, how we can't just sort of jog through our basic sets and then think that there's a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, you know, thing waiting for us. It's not. And so we, we just have to grow up a little bit more. And, and But I, I actually think, um, and I haven't seen my stats, but we, we talk about one point per possession. We try to be a one point per possession team. I actually thought... Um, Except for our turnovers, which I think is a function of just being a little disjointed and having some lineups that are different. But um, offensively, in terms of execution, we probably were right about at a point per possession. It was just less possessions, you know, for us. Coach Andre again. Um, I guess, obviously, this is a close-knit group, but facing adversity the way you are coming into this tournament, uh, do you see it even more so off the court? Like, did you notice it just in the body language today, just a little more? I'll tell you what, I, adversity is something, you know, that that's not, we don't have any real adversity. We have opportunity right now. We really do. You know, and uh, I grew up in a family where, you know, my, my mother was pregnant with me and had three kids and she was 27 years old and my father was killed in a plane crash. That's adversity. Okay? We're talking about a sport here. We're talking about basketball. We're talking about opportunity. And that's just how I see life. And so something happened and we turned it into an opportunity and I'm happy for everyone who did. Hi, Coach. Uh, Matt Snyder with the Gonzaga Bolton. Um, talk with the you know, Idaho State just a little bit about, about your pressure defense, you know, kind of more from a 1 1 3 to a 2 3. Can you just go into that, what you're trying to look for? Um, obviously, you've got a lot of length on the defensive end, but what are you trying to disrupt most in other teams on the defensive end? Yeah, I, I think that it starts with the ball pressure, and, and, and it's. it's it's very hard to ask somebody to absolutely exhaust themselves every possession, but that's their job. Okay, so if you're on the point guard and we're just asking you to just grind your legs, burn your legs, I mean, you'll see the language, we just keep talking. It doesn't work unless point A is pressure. And that person is one of the most unselfish players on our team. Whoever it is at that time is just totally giving to the team. They're not going to get the steal. They're not going to get any stats for it. They're going to be exhausted, and they just have to, you know, basically suck it up and do it. And to see everybody willing to do that today started the whole attitude of, 
okay, well, if you're going to kill yourself on that ball there, I'm not going to let you down behind you. I was very proud. I hope it was fun to watch. As I saw it unveil, I thought, I'm really proud of this team. This is really awesome. I mean, this was, this was like a symphony of, of, of response, and uh, it was beautiful for me. But that, that's how I love to coach. I mean, that, that's why I coach. I love people to be there for each other. Coach, uh, Crystal moves into the starting lineup. Got a couple quick fouls. How <laughs> yeah, much thanks a lot, bother, Chris. Huh? Yeah, how much did that bother you? Because you probably wanted her to get a lot of minutes with that group. But, and how did well, you, you know, I, I, I thought the story in half was that Crystal and Steph, you know, were both in foul trouble. And you would think, wow, we're exposed now. And it just, it, well, then the next person slid in and did their job. And, you know, we slid in with freshmen, and, and they slid in and did their job. And then we had to take the air on the ball a little bit and execute and um, go into the post and the points in the paint and um, for us to get uh, 32 points in the paint and for our bench to outscore any other team's bench 23 to 8 is a very big deal for the University of Miami and that was that's nice so I just think that we've adapted we've adjusted we move forward and um, you know we responded in a way I really needed them to. Having seen Gonzaga can you talk about just uh, your impressions of them and what, 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 what awaits Monday night? Uh, I'm not going to get a lot of sleep from now until that game. They are awesome. They are awesome. They are awesome. They are awesome. Um, everything that I'm just bragging about my team, you can just turn around and say right about Gonzaga in terms of how they share the ball. Uh, they're in sync. Um, you know, I came just you know for the second half, but when they need a big three, it's not just one person who can hit it. I mean, that end of the shot clock threes tonight were unbelievable. And I just wish it was the same kid, but it wasn't. And so we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of court that we have to cover. They have our respect, and um, they're, they're, they're an incredibly talented team and, and um, just so, so, so well coached. I almost have jealousy about how well coached they are. They're unbelievable. They, they just they get it in terms of concepts, in terms of vision, in terms of finding the open player. They're unbelievable. We've got a heck of a task.